to another commentary done by Diggity Bottom right in corner. We have Tarnock starting as the purple Terran. Upper left in corner, we have Tenderization starting as the black Terran. This is going to be on Polypoid. And this should be this should give you guys an idea. Bottom right in corner, Terranac, uh, when I was playing through CPL, he kicked my butt going through the uh, initial testing stages. I was playing Zerg versus him and flew lost, contr lost control of a control group and flew my Mutalist flock overhead his medic marine army and he just obliterated them and i know that taranak's gotten better since then so it's kind of like one of these like military sort of things where uh they they say like oh yeah this military thing can engage more than 50 targets at once and it's like well more than 50 could be like a million or more than 50 could be like a hundred right here i'm giving myself a solid ceiling taranak i am not as good as taranak to give you an idea of my skill level but very active out in the CPL community. So you can use that as like a diggity gauge of like, okay, worse than Terranac. Tenderization, another stalwart guy in the community, like a pillar. He's the guy who made the, uh, the machine learning program that detects Artosis' salt level. And he's also been involved in other projects. Really smart guy. Actually, I believe getting a master's or a doctorate in some machine learning out there. So absolute big brain stud as you'd expect in the starcraft community building that barracks to that corner it looks like a barracks being built for taranach to potentially go for a front door seal apparently he i'm also informed he did literally everything for gypsy's channel so yeah one of those guys who's out there active player programmer community organizer does it all those are the, actually the tenderizations of the community are really the guys that make it sail I just want to point that out, like being those guys that can go out and just have the skills and, and just make little things happen like that, it really boosts the community out for a whole, and so I really want to lift him up while I can. So in this in this fight, I've got, I'm kind of favoring them both, so it'll be fun to see who wins. Both SCV scouts making their way to the bottom left-hand corner. We do have, looks like second supply depot and base. This is kind of an odd position for tenderization. I'm wondering if he's doing this to try to trick that SCV initially. Should that SCV scout make its way into his base, kind of have that late barrack scout. He is building an initial marine. Initial marine being built as well, factory. However, I believe it was a marine before factory and factory first before marine, maybe because of that SCV scout in that bottom left-hand corner for Taranak. Marine already setting up at the natural, so it's not gonna be so with this barracks at the lower location, what the other advantage of this is when you lift it off, you can have a little bit of a faster scout out there. Tenderization already setting an SCV towards that natural expansion, suggesting this is going to be a quick expand. The SCV going to shoot the gap. Lazy Marine not even going to bother shoot, shooting that SCV across the corner. It's going to confirm a factory and that single SCV on gas. Another SCV... Make it, or sorry, that uh, SCV, it's kind of hard to tell between the black and the purple, yeah? Marine realizing his folly, gonna work his way back out, but recognizing that that command center is, in fact, being built. Command center being built opposite side for Taranak, feeling a little bit safer, and producing that initial vulture on both sides. They expect to see kind of standard play, but because of tenderizations, looks like he got that barracks lift a little bit later. So these barracks for scouting information are going to be about dead even. Common meta these days is to just go three factory vulture, get that single machine shop for speed and mines, and play out that game from there. I feel like Polypoid was one of those maps that made it happen because of the wide open natural choke where it's just hard to box out units so that you can just suicide vultures in and wipe out SCV lines and just quickly rebuild and stymie your opponent from there. Third factory, machine shop. Machine shop was built a little bit early for tenderization, so he's gonna get that third factory a little bit later, but I don't think it's gonna be so significant. Command center gonna finish just about dead even on both sides. And speed being upgraded a little bit earlier now this, this can be a significant thing because that faster speed can translate into more territory and faster positioning. 
And positioning can be huge for initial vultures. Right now, tenderization, though, up in SCVs overall. So the economic lead, so up on the economic lead, down on the tech lead, potentially. You can see already trying to create a bit of barricade on that front door to deal with potential vulture attacks. And speaking of vulture attacks, they're making their way out onto the map. That barrack's going to get an eyeful just... The timing of this, too, is actually kind of fun. I'm wondering if this was intended from the green map mapers, as, or if it's just something these guys have figured out. But as that barracks is floating up, that's right as the vultures are on the way so they can see what they're up against. And it potentially is going to be 5-on-5 five five with a closer reinforcement point for tenderization, also getting that second supply depot down to go ahead and box things up. But if Terranach can get mines upgraded, this is going to give Terranach a little bit of a ground advantage, and being able to spot your opponent and his army movements can be absolutely huge. Armory being built. I don't see an equivalent army, uh, armory for Terranach, so it looks like some Goliaths wanting to be added that can help swat down that barracks that can also help against the initial vulture attacks. But right now, Terranach, with more vultures closer... And actually, this is one of those moments where we might have been able to engage a fight, have reinforcements, and shoot that gap. We'll see. Tender walking uphill and unfortunately getting a lot of his vultures caught off guard. So he's going to have an inferior vulture count on the ground of Ter and yeah, Taranak immediately laying mines outside and pushing up reinforcements. And he's actually ahead in the vulture count right now. Tender lowering that barracks as a distraction, also wanting to plug the gap so it takes longer. That's actually a really clever move. So that the vultures take longer to reinforce to try to negate a bit of that advantage. The barracks going to be forced out by that single marine. And are we seeing Goliaths moving on? Siege check being upgraded. No Goliaths being tacked on. No quick plus one weapons either as of yet for Tender. But right now, Tender way up in the SCV count. So Taranak does need to get something done with these vultures if he's going to stay economically relevant because the macro has just been better from tenderization up to this stage and a nice defensive look at the plug gap here with those vultures so right now yeah map control and Terranox favor but way down adding a second machine shop actually and getting siege tanks and siege tech so maybe thinking about just plugging tenderization in quickly however a fourth and a fifth factory being added on with a second machine shop Tender does have the economy to roll with it, so Terranek might want to make moves sooner rather than later. And is doing so, engaging vultures. Able to get some initial damage done. The Siege Shank needs to be very, very careful. Wow, just outside this minefield. The Barracks is going to be able to spot all of this. A Siege Shank coming from that right-hand edge. And let's see if Terranek goes for it. Might want to just play more defensively from this stage. Maybe try to grab an early third, but instead it looks like pressing up additional siege tanks, and it is going to be three three factories soon versus five with the economy to roll it for tenders. So Terranak might be in a spot of trouble and might need to shoot this immediately. Siege tank taking initial shot and actually firing against vultures rather than the, the counter siege tank. Just out of range. That was weird. It got the initial shot on, maybe just because there's a little bit. And a wraith! I missed the wraith! being built. Siege tank going down and dragging a mine. That means all siege tanks gone, which means there's going to be three free siege tanks for Terranak now to press up to that natural expansion plus a lack of anti-air for tenderization. He does have a single Goliath making his way out. But the siege tank starting to close the gap. Might be able to salt the natural expansion sooner rather than later, particularly with this Wraith able to spot that high ground. The supply depot is getting taken out. That's going to allow reinforcements to push up. That Wraith needs to back up as those three Goliaths able to press the front. But those are also Goliaths that weren't siege tanks. That is going to help against potentially the Vulture Force. Now Tenderization has that fourth and fifth factory to try to press against this. Needs to produce a lot of troops in a hurry. As Taranak pressing in. SCV's pulling off the line to attack. No, that was a bad rally. A third expansion trying to get built. Tenderization built that third command center in base. Tried to float it out to the third as his natural expansion was being plugged. And that is going to be a quick game. So Taranak able to take out Tenderization and 
By proxy, that means I also lose to tenorization by transitive factor. There's no, like, the... Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.